Hey guys, so this is the first of many how-to videos and uh, due to a lot of people asking us precisely like where do you put this in this video or whatnot, we're going to start a series of how-to videos on things that we feel that you might generally need to do on your sailboat, especially on older boats, sometimes on newer boats and for all of you that are interested we'll show you the details of getting it done. So as you can see, here's one of our bilges, our bilge areas. And what we've done is we've grinded it down using one of these. It's like a sanding disc that goes on a grinder or otherwise one of these flapper discs. This is more cost effective. Uh, these are great. Both of these processes take a, make a lot of dust. Um, you can get a guard onto your grinder that sucks up with vacuum. You can do that. Alternatively, you can get an orbital sander with a nice coarse grit. So you know the coarsest grit you can find. The coarsest grit we could find is a 40 and you can sand it down. So what we've done on this one is take it up, take it down really right down to the fiberglass. These small areas where you're seeing a bit of uh, pool coat remaining or flow coat is in the little cavities of the of the fiberglass. Now we don't want to cut back that top layer of the fiberglass because then we'll be removing fiberglass. What we really want to do is just remove the top the shiny coat of the flow coat because that's what has the wax layer on it. So once we get rid of that wax layer on the surface, it, the new coat will adhere to it. You could sand it, but in this case, I don't want to add extra material on top, so I took it all the way down to the glass. This also allows me to see the state of the glass. And for you guys that are doing a repair, so if you have that star cracking, you want to take it right down to the glass before you fill it up again. So at this stage, we're going to vacuum now, and then we'll do an acetone clean. You could do a soap clean if you want before that. All the prep uh, just benefits it. So it's actually good that I vacuumed it up. And so the reason why I wear gloves is so that, you, that your, your body naturally releases oils. And you don't want to touch on the surface that you've already prepped with that oil that comes off your hands because that will transfer to there and when you put it on not to say that it will come off especially on flow coats and pull coats that stuff's really tough and it actually creates a surface tension amongst its entire length it's not like general paint where one piece will peel off it's, it's a lot tougher this stuff but try and avoid the better prep you do the better end product it is so if you can see right here here's a shiny spot and that's not it is fiberglass but what that is was well, someone probably at some point messed some resin in here and that bit of shininess would be a bad adhesion spot. So what we're gonna do is just take a little bit of sandpaper and we're gonna sand that down and get rid of that shiny. Here's an old piece of one of the fine discs that we use for the grinding. I'm just gonna knock it down there. And I'm not wearing a mask right now, but you should at all times wear a mask when doing this, especially if there's little dust particles coming up. Um, with the machines, without a doubt, do not do this without the mask. I'm doing it so that you guys can hear me while I'm doing it. So all those shiny spots I've knocked down. If there's one or two spots that you're not happy with, knock them down. So you get those shiny spots away. The people doing a really small repair, like a really small area, don't start up your grinder and go grinding to get a patch that big out. You're going to create more dust, more dirt everywhere. Take a bit of tough sandpaper. Put some good old elbow grease in there. If it's a small area like that, it'll be fine. Just remember when applying new on old, wherever you're gonna apply it, flow coat onto an old flow coat, you're gonna notice the difference unless you've done the entire area. But if you're fine with just that little patch area, mask it off nicely, put it in there. If you find that, it will look good. It will seal it and protect it and do its job that it's meant to be. Fiberglass by itself, even ISO resins are not uh, water perfect. So with time, in layman's terms, they will get water penetrating into them small. What the flow coat or the pool coat does is pretty much seals it off and then allows it for lengthier periods, easier to clean. That wax surface that comes onto the top allows almost nothing to stick to it. So that's the pro sides of doing your bilges all in flow coat or pool coat. And the color we went for is for a gray, it was unfortunately a lot darker than I thought it was. They promised me a cloud gray and I was imagining a light gray. It wasn't quite a bit darker than that. But we're gonna go with gray in the bilges. Any little rust particles or things like that, you'll never see. So I've got a rag with acetone here. Yeah, it's just a standard normal rag. Now what I'll do is I'll do a length wipe, wipe it over, length wipe, wipe it over. 
want to try and do is eliminate the amount of contamination that you do but pool coat and flow coat is really tough stuff it really forgives you when you do mess ups i wouldn't try and do this on 2k auto body stuff there you gotta really really get even zero zero contamination this stuff will forgive you so but getting there do a good job so let's wipe it down i vacuum it again after sanding and now we're just giving it the acetone i'm just flipping around so i can use a different area and a bit more acetone and use your cloths in between the layers It's perfect when someone shows you a nice little piece and they're prepping that area. That's always great. But I mean, real world scenarios, it's going to be tough to where you're working in. It's going to be uncomfortable. So adapt to what you've got. Sometimes people show videos and you'll be like, oh, you'd love to do it, but you need a million products that you can't do or you can't get. So I'm going to try and keep it really basic that you can get the product, the job done, and it will be great. What I'm doing is just taping off all the edges because I'm going to paint this entire inner surface area also with the with the pull coat. So taping it all down. Ensure that your wood's nice and prepared. Don't sand it too smooth because you want the pull coat to get a nice contact surface area. Masking up with gloves is always a mission. But um, you get it. So a little bit about what flow coat is. It's pretty much a polyester resin that's got a pigment in it and especially formulated with some thickeners in that. So it's not as flowing as resin, but it's relatively still flowing. That's the color we went for in the bilges. When the, and it's to a certain degree it's self leveling. So once you apply it out, it kind of levels out a little bit by itself. You can add products into yeah, I think they're called esters um, that make it more fluid, so it'll flow easier in that. But um, yeah, we're just going for that one. We'll prep it up, we'll give it a good mix. So have one of these measuring cups if you want to make it easier for yourself. Um, you can't polyester as long as you've got a rough idea of what, how close you're getting. Um, you'll be fine. Try not to over catalyze this stuff. It gives you very little time to work with. Ambient temperature is always great to do between 20 degrees Celsius and 30 degrees Celsius. Um, below 10 degrees Celsius, you gotta, you gotta heat up the room a little bit and then run at a 3% mix. We'll do, today's an average day. We'll do a 2% mix on it today because it's um, we're sitting at about 22 degrees Celsius. So 2% mix should give us about 20 minutes on this one liter. So one liter is a roughly about a quart. This is our catalyst, MEK, 2%. Mix it good. Make sure it's mixed well. So after giving a good thorough mix, I'm gonna start by painting the, the insides and then I'll show you guys. So paint the worst areas first and then when you get to the end you can do the area that everyone's gonna be that's gonna be visible to everyone and you can do nice long brush strokes. You don't wanna paint it on like a paint where you just wanna put a thin layer. You wanna give it a nice generous coat, nice and thick, and then apply it and then just drag your brush just over it to do that final smoothing. Final step before it dries up is just take your edge taping off. Take that edge taping off and you got one sealed floor. These floorboards here are all the boat soles are epoxied on the underside. So they've been sealed from there. 
So all we did now is seal the new opening, and there you go. Looks brand spanking new. Looks brand new. And that's how you just restore your bilges. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Give us a thumbs up, subscribe below if you want to watch some more videos. And let us know if you like our how-to videos. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe below if you haven't already and don't forget to give us a big thumbs up because it helps us out a lot. If you would like to join our amazing patron family and get behind the scenes footage of what we're up to, a link is provided in the description below.